Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about anthocyanides, their purpose in nature and their effects on wine. Anthocyanides are phenolic compounds found in many different plants around the world. They have red, purple, blue and black colors and occur primarily in fruits, flowers and leaves. The most prominent fruits with high anthocyanin content are blueberries, black crabberries, red cabbages, black beans, purple corn and obviously grapes. In grapeberries, the coloring developed to attract animals, just like us, to help them spread their seeds and thus their genes. So, from an evolutionary perspective, white grape varieties don't really make sense. Hence, they almost never appear in nature because the lack of color is caused by two separate mutations. Researchers suggest that all white grape varieties can be tracked back to one common ancestor that was lucky to be discovered by a human. Different varieties have different concentration of anthocyanin, but almost all of them contain their pigments in their first few cell layers of their skin. A few exceptions are the so-called tentorial varieties, like Alicant Boucher, which has anthocyanin even in its pulp. But all the major grape varieties that we use for red wine making belong to the first category. So to transfer these color compounds from the grapes to the wine, we have to use a process called maceration. I'm working on a video explaining this whole process, so don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss it. The main idea behind it is that the grape skins are in contact with the grape juice for a longer period to extract the color and other beneficial compounds. Without the maceration process, it is possible to make white wine from red grape varieties. For example, in Champagne, the Blanc de Noir, means white from black, is a white champagne made only from black grapes. But why do different red wines have different color variations if all of them contain the same anthocyanin? Well, anthocyanin is kind of like a chameleon. It changes color all the time based on the environment it is in. When the wine has a lower pH level, meaning higher acidity, it gets a bright red color. On the other hand, if the wine has a higher pH level, it is going to get more bluish hue, which causes a purple-like wine color. Also, a brownish color might appear when red wines are aged for a longer period and the anthocyanines react with other compounds in wine like tannins, giving it a so-called brick-red hue commonly known as aged wine color. Through this process, some of the compounds exceed their solubility and become sediments. This is one of the reasons for decanting older wines. But let's also test it, not just talk about it. Here we have some red wine, as you can see, pretty bright red. Let's save the color hue for reference here, just with a drop. And now let's add some sodium bicarbonate. And with this, the wines should start developing some bluish hues. As you can see, it turned darker. And as you can see now, after a short time, as we changed the acidity of the wine, it turned dark blue. Let's compare it to the original color that we had here. The difference is pretty obvious. Unlike some people on the internet, besides their visual aspects, anthocyanines have other purposes in life. They increase the antioxidant capacity, which determines the aging potential of the wine. Combined with tannins, they affect the mouthfeel and astringency of a wine. But anthocyanines also have beneficial health effects on us. They are used in different medications and skincare products. In the last years, there have been studies that showed some extreme effects, like cancer prevention and heart disease treatment, but these claims need more research. And also, in many cases, it has been shown that to get any of these health benefits, you would have to consume impossible amounts of anthocyanide. That's it for this video, subscribe for more and see you in the next one.